I am often asked how one goes about starting a professional organizing business. And you have to admit, it's an unusual profession, but one that is growing all over the globe. In this video, I want to share with you some of the initial first steps you'll take to become a professional organizer. Hi, I'm professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence, and I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have space for the things that truly matter. Today, I'm sharing three ways that you can start your business by determining what kind of organizer you will be, testing your skills as a home organizer, and creating time to run your business. The first step is to determine what kind of organizer you will be. I often refer to this as creating your niche. It simply means leveraging existing skills from previous work experience or designing the type of environment and people that you want to work with. There are so many different types of professional organizers and people are not going to know how to refer business to you or if they should hire you if they're not sure what it is that you do. At the end of this video, I'll show you how you can get your free worksheet to help you brainstorm a possible niche. But what you can start with is simply thinking about what existing skills you have that you can springboard off of to create your business. Some areas to consider are, do you have a knack for interior design or staging? Do you have project management experience? Have you worked in a very busy environment and like that hustle and bustle of working with a team? Are you particularly patient and enjoy getting to know people and working with them one-on-one? -on -one? If you are a stay-at-home mom or nanny or housekeeper or even a senior caretaker, you probably have a lot of home management skills that you can share with families to make them more organized and productive. Brainstorm ideas about what type of organizer you will be. You can also ask someone close to you or a former coworker or boss about your special skill set. Next, I want you to get your professional organizing business started by practicing a proven method on some willing participants. I'm assuming you already have a pretty organized home, or you probably would not be attracted to this type of career. However, you can experiment in your own home by installing organizing products or simply improving the workflow in your kitchen or home office. You can also organize for family members if they are comfortable being a guinea pig for you. However, I think the best way to practice is to work with friends or acquaintances who will allow you to do small projects in their home. If you're doing a pro bono job, I probably would not volunteer to organize someone's entire home, or you may be just working with that one person for the next several months. However, you could ask a friend if you could organize one space in their home, such as a closet or kitchen or garage. Maybe choose a space that's a little different from the way your own home is set up just to give you a little bit of variety. Now, for example, I have always been a bit of a minimalist when it comes to my clothing. So when I was starting out, I did several of my friends' closets knowing that they had much larger and diverse wardrobes than I would ever have the opportunity to work on if I was just organizing my own closet. It will be different organizing for others. I recommend you use a three-step process I call GDP. GDP stands for gather and sort like items, ask your client to decide what to keep, and finally put things away in an orderly fashion. I found that following this proven method allows professional organizers to work efficiently, reduces decision fatigue, and provides forward momentum even when you are working in extreme cluttered situations. The third step I want you to take in starting your organizing business is not a very obvious one, but I think it's a huge mistake that new and aspiring organizers make and that is not carving out enough time to run your business. As a general rule, you want to spend as much time working on your business as in your business. Working in your business are those paid hours that you have working with your clients, but what's as important is that the other half of your time should be spent working on your business. This is the time you are going to be networking, 
following up with leads, and doing all the administrative tasks that come with running a business, like budgeting and branding. You want to also make time for training. I have been in this business almost 20 years, and I still carve out time in my month for learning new skills. The mistake I see people make is that they think they can run their organizing business on the weekend and work a few hours with clients in their spare time. Problem with that is that if you're not working on your branding and lead generation, you're not going to have those clients for weekend work. So make sure that you're making time to both work on your business and in your business by carving out office hours throughout the week. So I have a tool for you to help you brainstorm what type of professional organizer you could become. And that is my niche worksheet. I also want to give you a game plan for practicing your organizing skills. You'll find them both in my 30 step guide to launching your professional organizing business. And I put a link to that free guide in the description of this video. If you have questions about starting a professional organizing business, please drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos on downsizing, decluttering, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.